Welcome to the second tutorial on the generation of DNA nanostructures from polyhedral meshes. In this tutorial I will go more into depth on the design of staple strands, especially for more complex meshes. Here to the left we see a segment of a mesh and to the right we see the DNA representation of the same mesh segment. The mesh consists of the scaffold strand in green traversing every edge of the mesh and the staple strands in blue binding the mesh together at the vertices. In this mesh the staple strands are designed with the default staple generation in V-helix where each staple strand connect two edges of the scaffold placing a staple breakpoint in the center of every edge. This method works very well with meshes where the edges are roughly the same length. As I will show you in measure, meshes with a larger spread in edge length, this method may not be optimal. So here I have to mention that we cannot change the routing of the staples, as this is fully determined by the scaffold routing. What we can change, however, is the number and the position of staple breakpoints. So if we again look at the original mesh and select the central vertical edge and shorten it, if we then look at the DNA representation of the same mesh segment with the default staple design, we see that the two staples binding to the shortened edge still have, have a breakpoint in the center. This means that their binding regions on the central edge are quite short and this could possibly lead to poor hybridization stability. So one way to overcome this is to actually remove the breakpoint separating the two staples on the short edge and connecting them into one longer staple. So this long staple will instead hybridize to three edges instead of two and have long binding regions on each edge. But So I have to say the downside of connecting multiple staples is the risk of creating kinetic traps and that the cost of oligonucleotide synthesis will increase with length. So for complex meshes we have to find a balance. In this tutorial I will show you how to manually modify staple breakpoints and also how to control the automatic staple generation in vHelix. Okay, so I have again started Maya with the vHelix plugin running and I will now import a more complex mesh. Import Okay, I have now imported a simplified version of the Stanford Bunny into vHelix. And before I start modifying the staple breakpoints on this design, I will show you a useful vHelix feature. And this is accessed from the script editor. But what you must first do is put your shelves into the custom shelf. And then you must start the script editor by clicking this little button in the lower right corner. And please make sure that you are in the MEL tab of the script editor. And then type strand. And then with capital L, length. And now it turns blue because this is a script. And uh, highlight this and just drag it up to the custom shelf up here and drop it and then Maya will ask you what type of script is this and this is a, you should select a mel script but I will just select cancel as I already have this feature and what it will give you is an extra button in the custom shelf which is called strand length and if you now select a staple in the design or the scaffold and push this button you will get the length of this strand as an output down here so this strand is 29 bases long. Okay, now we can start moving and deleting and adding breakpoints. So let's say that we want to remove the breakpoint between these two yellow staples here. I'll just recolor color this yellow staple. Okay, so between the red and yellow staple here. So what we have to do then is first selecting the last base of the red strand and then with shift selecting the first base of the yellow strand 
and then we go into helix connect basis so now we have removed the breakpoint between these two staples and joined them into one long staple connecting to three edges and now we can see how long this strand is by using the our new button here and it turns out it's 64 bases long so let's say that we just wanted to move the breakpoint between two, these two staples then the way to do this is to first join them as we just did and then again cutting them up by selecting one of the bases on the new long staple going into helix and disconnect bases so connect bases and disconnect bases is the two features that you use to add, remove, or move, move staple breakpoints in the design. And now I will show you a useful way to get an overview of, the, of your staples. And that is to, without anything selected, again hitting Helix, Export Strands. And please note that I haven't assigned a scaffold sequence yet, but I can still use the feature export strands. And this will take uh, a couple of minutes to finish. Okay, so now the export strand is finished, and I will save the export as uh, export. Now this has generated a comma separated value file again to the folder that I choose and I will open this in Excel. Just as in the last tutorial this gives the name of the sequence and also the sequence and as you see this is just question marks because I have not yet assigned any sequences and I will delete the first row which contains the scaffold strand and then I will select column A use data text to columns delimited and then I will add comma as a separator and click finish so now I have a, a list of every the name of every staple strand and its sequence which is just question marks and this may not seem so useful, but it is actually quite useful if you go into Excel and you type equal to len, so that's the length of this, of the sequence, which in this case was 32, and then I'll just drag this down to get the length of every of every staple strand. And then I'll select these three columns and use data sort and I will sort this on the column C which is my length measurement from smallest to largest and then I will hit OK and now I can see my staples sorted from smallest to largest and what I know in this case is that it's probably the, the very short staples are probably problematic as they will not give a good enough hybridization and the very long staples may be too expensive to synthesize. So from this window I can find the longest staple and add extra breakpoints in them to make them shorter and I can also find the shortest staples and connect them together with other staples to make them longer for a better hybridization. So let's say that I want to look at this 16 base sequence here. I, will, I read the name of this of this staple and it's Helix 2 to Helix 215. So then I go back into Maya and I choose Window Outliner. And in Windows in the Outliner I see the name of all seek of all the helixes in my design. So this staple was connecting from Helix 2. So then I select Helix 2 and I press F to move to that strand. And then I can see that it's probably this red strand that is very short. So I select it 
and then I hit my special button here and see that that is the 16 base strand so I can then connect it with this gray staple which seems quite short also so this gray staple is 18 bases and then it seems like a good idea to connect them together so I do this by hitting selecting the last base of the red strand and then shift selecting the first base of the gray strand and then going into helix connect bases and I have now I've instead created a 34 base staple which is a good length for DNA synthesis so using this method you can manually modify your breakpoints to get a good staple quality but now I will instead show you how to automatically generate multi-edge staples using vhelix so in vhelix the staple breakpoints are actually added when you import the R poly file into vhelix so if we want to change the the staple breakpoint generation we have to redo the import but with some other options and this is done by going in again to the script editor and here is the history of scripts uh, of, of output and I will go to the very top which is when we first hit import in this session to import the bunny mesh and this is the most simple way to do this and here I find this line called file import text base vhelix which is actually what happened when I used the import menu in Maya and I will just copy this file this line and then I will clicking in here I will create a new scene Don't say. and now if I go into the melt tab here and paste what I just copied I will actually get the line that will redo the import and if I just hit control enter at this point I will just redo the standard import with the standard breakpoint generation but now instead I will add some extra lines to give it to manually modify how vhelix puts its breakpoints so before import here I, I, I will write dash options and then I will write nicking min semicolon so this is adding some extra options to the vhelix importer and this this extra options takes two import values that I just put as X and Y right now. So the first one is Nick minimum length. And this is the value of the shortest edge where you want vhelix to put a Nick. So for example, if you have an edge that is only 10 bases, you might not want to have a Nick on that base because then the binding regions of the two staples binding to this edge would only be five bases each, which wouldn't bind very strong and then the second value here nicking max length which I have put to y is is the maximum staple length that vhelix should generate and this is normally regulated by how long staples you can order from your supplier DNA supplier at a reasonable cost and as you might understand these two values are actually competing with each other and it might not always be possible to satisfy both values so usually you have to try yourself try some compromise values and see what the output is but I will do it in this case with the x value of 16 so vhelix will avoid putting nicks on edges that are shorter than 16 bases and I will put the y value of 50 
meaning that VHelix should not create staple strands that are longer than 50 bases. And then I will hit Control Enter. And this will again bring up the VHelix importer, which can take a few minutes. Okay, so now the import has finished again. And I have again run the export strands feature to get an overview of my staples and sorted them in Excel, again from smallest to largest. And this time we see that the shortest staple strand is instead 19 bases. And the longest staple strand is 58 bases. So in this case I could probably rerun the import with slightly higher values. Or I could manually go in and connect the shortest bases staples together to get slightly longer staples. As the last part of this tutorial I will discuss a feature that we have found to be important for folding quality. As you move around in VHelix you may note that some strands appear to be interrupted, like this green staple strand appears to have a nick in the center, even though it is one connected strand. And this is because VHelix cannot place the helices tight enough in its representation, and this may lead to strain in the vertices in the final folding. And one way to overcome this is to fill the gaps between in the strands with extra unpaired bases and this we do in VHelix using the feature called autofill strand gaps so this can be used for just a few selected strands or for every strand in the design and I will first demonstrate it on this selected green staple strand here so we're going to Helix autofill strand gaps and what you see is that it added an extra base here that is not actually paired to any other base. So this will just fill out the vertex, making it more relaxed. And this can be done on every strand in the entire design by selecting nothing and doing helix out to fill strand gaps. And this could take a few minutes to finish. And please do this before you assign a scaffold sequence. Now VHelix has finished the autofill strand gaps by adding extra unpaired bases both to the scaffold strand and to the staple strands. Now you can uh, assign a scaffold sequence to your scaffold and export the staple strands using the export strand command. And please note that the extra unpaired bases in your staples will be exported as question marks because they cannot be assigned a sequence yet and you have to manually assign these with whatever base type you want and we use adenines in our designs. This is the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching.